I, I guess I look at it as people don't buy products. They buy stuff that they need to do whatever it is they want to do in their life. Um, and I think a lot of the processes that we've got in place at the moment are, they're so antiquated. They're based on stuff that we've done for years, on assumptions and bias and all things that really don't relate to me as an individual. And yet everything else about my life is personal. You know, Google is personal. Uh, my social media is personal. Um, obviously, it's my life and I'm used to living it through the internet and all of the access to information that I want to seek out. And yet the one bit that's really important to me, which is my money and how I live my life and whether I can afford stuff, is still really confusing. It's still focused on um, words and expressions and and ways in which people interact with me that I don't understand. So it's no surprise, I think, that borrowers get themselves into a difficult position. You know, buy now, pay later is a, a, just an explosion of catastrophe waiting to happen. Um, and yet there are so many different ways, I think, that consumers are prepared to be more open about their data and their financial data, obviously, um, to help ensure that they get access to stuff and understand what they're getting access to and why it's relevant to them. Now you're getting excited. <laughs> Amazing, open data, open finance, open banking. Um, so I'm not from financial uh, services sector. I've been working for Money Hub for four years. Uh, I'm consumer throughout my career, telco, uh, Samsung hardware. But for me, this is, this is a, just unlocks so much for all of those brands that want to provide products and services to their customers. Because if I share my data, I can tell you what I'm really interested in. Therefore, you can be super personal with what I want. It's relevant. It's about me. Not, not about someone like me. It's about me. So what, what are we working on? I think fundamentally the underlying thing, categorization. Data output is only as good as the data input. And there's an awful lot of bad categorization out there. Poor quality, that basically means that when I start using something that's underpinned by a poor categorization engine, it doesn't make any sense. So therefore I'm not gonna engage with it. So categorization for us is really important. We've had 10 years of building that and creating an engine that's built on consumers telling us, you got that right, or do you know what? You get that wrong and you need to change that. That's, you not categorize that correctly. So we've been able to develop and grow what we do um, into an incredible machine. So categorization on existing data sources or then obviously bringing in open banking, open finance um, and being able to then put products and services on top of that, that's accurate, an accurate depiction of what people are using. And then layered on top of that is all that behavioral insight. So if I take the lending market particularly, um, what we're seeing from our clients is an incredible set of metrics and growth that they're able to achieve. So for one of our clients, they've seen an 18% increase in their ability to lend successfully. Um, so opening up potential for new markets for them as well. But a really powerful uh, piece of uh, insight is in, their, in the first three months of a loan, this most in, uh, um, critical time, obviously uh, people paying back a loan, um, they've seen a 48% improvement in their first payment success. And then that goes to 33% improvement over the first three months. So that means they're lending better to more people. So they're getting it right for the consumer. But we want to take that a bit further. So giving the open banking and open finance data insights at that point of um, lending, we think there's an opportunity for organizations, whether it's secured or unsecured loans, is to have a long-term relationship with that customer and have that continued affordability check. So not just a one-off, off you go, great, thanks very much, but um, it hits consumer duty, it hits what a consumer wants, which is, is this, right, is this product right for me when I apply for it? And is it, does it continue to be right for me? So we can do that. And then the final step of that whole journey is, and then how do we help these organizations look back to look forwards? Um, Oncology is a great example. Um, uh, Oncology has been using for years AI. So when a, a, a cancer patient um, presents itself, uh, uh, and uh, their symptoms, they'll use AI to be able to give the best 
outcome, solution outcome, based on what they've done in the past to get the best results. So we're doing that with our data for our customers. So we'll look back at all of their previous decisions, be that lending or collections or whatever it might be, um, and enable them to look at all of the metrics and measures and points at which they said yes or no, and what were the customer behavioral insights in that, to be able to then move the product forwards in the future. So you use the data of the past to make decisions for the future. It frees up your underwriters to be able to actually help people who need help, and there's lots of people out there who need that help.